We went on a missions trip with uh, Pastor Woodrow Walker and Abundant Life Church to the Philippines. And as a result of that, uh, we saw the need was great. We fell in love with the Milan people uh, that we saw the BYOBB shirts up there in the mountains. <laughs> and we adopted that, that particular group of people and uh, began to build schools and uh, send the money to support the teachers every year and to help uh, Nonabert Malit, who's a member of Abundant Life Church, to establish his ministry. And that's, that's how it started out. To sit in the seat that he was in, I didn't know all the stuff was attached to the seat. Yeah. See, I thought it was just feeding the hungry. Right. But when I sat in the seat, I found out, help me, my son's in jail. Yes. Can you pray with me? Can I hug you? Can you yes. love on me? Yes. You know, can you come to my school? Can you come speak? And, you know, and all this stuff was attached to the office that he was in. You know, you got to be able to sleep at night. That's right. And when you're tossing and turning at night about and you're seeing, I remember I had an open vision. One time I was at my house on East Lake Drive and, and I was looking out and it was a, as if the front of the house disappeared and I saw all these people just reaching out. You know, they were ragged and dirty and they were reaching out to me and I was like, no, no, I don't have what you need. It's not, mm. don't ask me for that. Right. And so that, it's been a progressive growth because it's not something that you always want to do. I have to be honest with you. It's not something I Tell just wake truth. up in the morning and yeah. run in here with ballet shoes on going, feed the poor, feed <laughs> yes, the poor. No, we're going to feed the poor. Sometimes you're dragging yourself in. You're saying, Lord, God, help me get through this day. Where are the food coming from? Where is the money coming from? God has got to be the source. That's right. I cannot believe that this bishop or this company or this guy or that person is the source. If God doesn't touch their hearts to help us, we're lost because we don't have all the fancy bells and whistles of the bigger <laughs> nonprofits, okay? Yeah. <laughs> we don't have that going on, so it's gotta be God that's so, so you have to have a continuum of care that addresses the complex needs of the poor. Because I, I was actually homeless for a little while in New York. Yeah. And my husband and I went there, we didn't have a place to stay. We learned how that felt. I lived in my mom's basement for a long time. I learned how that felt. I've suffered and, and, and been glad to have three dollars to get that chicken wings and rice dinner. <laughs> so I knew how that felt. You know, I've, I've lost my parents tragically for, for me, uh, both of them in the year 2000. Uh, so I know what that's like. When you live, when you live through the message, then you can minister from that point. But Daddy's original idea was that an individual could come into this process and change their lives if they wanted to. BYOBB, we highlight those who highlight the Christ. Where y'all from? Richmond, Virginia. Me and the Christian fellas. Well, what y'all doing down here? We came for the go conference. The go always conference. y'all we're here with uh <laughs> this brother you know he's letting us into the door into the into the backgrounds of what is happening at the father's house you know pastor wellington boone is, is the overseer of the house but you know you got other pastors that are feeding the flock that are you know writing books and, and just doing things within the body of christ all for the sake 
of the youth, all for the sake of making sure that Christ is formed in each and every one. We really believe that God is raising up a new generation that will rule and reign with Him in that life, but also in this life. And we believe that they're called to be servants, you know, public servants, whether it's in the areas of medicine, whether it's ultimately in the areas of politics, whether it's ultimately in the areas of uh, science, but we feel like that God has called us to rule and reign in every area of life. And so we're really excited about what God is doing. We gathered students uh, from primarily the East Coast that have come here. We're believing to hear a word from God, to be trained and empowered to make a difference in their generation. What is God using you within that vision, uh, particularly, you know, to deal with the youth? What, 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 what's your assignment? My assignment really is to gather leaders. See, the really important thing for us is that we're going to have to have a practical application. We will tell our youth that they, they need to be saved, they need to be on fire, we want, we want them to have the Holy Ghost, but the thing is they have to have a practical application yeah. of who they are. That's right. And if they don't have an understanding of the world, they have to understand how what they're doing fits law, fits government, fits politics, fits education. So when they choose their majors and choose what they're going to do, they can see that they're going to be overcoming the world. That's right. But, but not just because they're going to church, but it's what they get in the church that's going to impact the world. So we're trying to take, teach the children right now, and that some of them literally are in middle school, some in high school, some are college students from all different places around the nation, but we're trying to bring them here and give them an understanding of God's worldview. You know, one of the things that you just said, too, that reminds me of, of again, my upbringing, you know what I'm saying? Right. We came up in religion. Right. We came up with a whole bunch of, you know, craziness. And and we were told and we were trained to really come out of the world. And we, we took that scripture of, of be separate and, you know, come out from among them as literal. And we left the world behind and, and let the darkness come in. And, and what I hear you saying is that right now you're training the youth to understand that the political field is a field of harvest. The business field is a field of harvest. And they have to get back in and empty and, 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 and actually infuse the Christ into those fields. It's interesting because they talked about Jesus, how he wet strong in favor, but he was great. He was a man of great stature. Isaac was destined for God. They can recognize that they have greatness on the inside of them. But they're not just called to just kind of show up in church on Sundays. But they have something inside of them that can impact this nation, that can impact this generation. Then we also going to encourage them on passion because you, you have to be driven for something. You know, some, this world journey is going for money, they're going for luxuries, they're going for things. Things, right. But they're not driven for cause. In the civil rights movement, these guys were driven because they wanted right standing, they wanted uh, justice, mm -hmm. civil rights mm -hmm. justice. But, but now, I mean, we have to have a drive for righteousness. That's right. In our right. mind, we're not, we're not going to tempt with anything else. Remember, we hate evil, but we love God. That's right. So because yeah. of that, yeah. we stand it. And that's the kind yeah. of energy and drive that has to be in our, our youth. Yeah. That's the only way they'll take our gospel anymore. We cannot be halfway with our gospel. And the thing about it is, like, they're watching us. You know what I'm saying? Because the thing about the youth is that they they, they don't want to hear about a passe God. They don't want to, you know, they don't want to hear, you know, this happened back then, this happened back then. They want to know why, where is God now and, and why do we not see him in, in your life and this life and whatever. And that's what's really the, I think, the that, that brings fear to, 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 to what is already. And it's not that what is already is what was wrong for its time, but there's, there's you, we got to pass the baton. And, and so that's what I see you guys doing. That's what I see, you know, the whole ministry doing, the conference doing, and it's an exciting thing. And, and we want you guys out there to know that there are people, you may hear that the church don't care, you may hear that the world don't care, whatever you hear, but the body of Christ, the kingdom of God, is doing what they're supposed to be doing. And we're going to see the fire of God in the church and in the youth because it's still in us. And my brother, I appreciate you, and I thank you so much Enjoy for doing what God is doing. Amen. Be God.
this is Faithful First, and this is BYOBB. You know, BYOBB.TV. Well, we need your help. I need your help. We need to talk to all those techies out there, web designers, camera people, editors especially. We need your help. You in the body of Christ. It doesn't matter what church you attend. It matters that you are the body of Christ, and you're interested in all of these things, editing, web design, all the things that put this program together. BYOBB, of course. We need you. So contact me, Faithful First, at BYOBB.TV. That's Faithful First at BYOBB.TV. Or call 770-484-5855. We need you.